Um, I want to go back to Friday night now at the SCG. It was a terrific contest. It really was. And uh, it had everything, including this. Oh, it was a great game. Uh, what a comeback from the Sydney Swans. They looked gone here, and this was the moment. So a free kick was paid to Richmond, Dion Prestia, but the ball was booted. So Dusty Martin, Jack Reed all saying, that should be a 50-metre penalty. The umpire, to his credit, he's not the senior umpire. He asked, he asked Matt Stevick, who's the senior umpire, what, what's the situation here? And he said, no, common sense should prevail. He didn't hear the whistle. Uh, it's not a 50-metre penalty. Me, I personally think it should have been paid a 50-metre penalty. I've seen it time and time again where a, a player kicks the ball, has a shot for goal after the event, and a 50-metre is paid. Whether you heard the whistle or you don't, a 50-metre is paid. So, to me, I think Rick Prestia should have been having a shot from 30 metres out, and they've gone the soft call there and the easy way out by not paying that 50-metre. Uh, and to actually bring common sense into yeah. it, when has it that was. ever been part of the umpire yeah, and charter anyway? But um, Terry Digby, who's um, uh, our videotape guru, I assume, I don't know if we still use videotape, but he's a guru and has been for years and years and years with football. He timed it this morning. Now, in television, there's uh, 24 frames to a second. And he said there were eight frames, which is a third of a second, from the time of the whistle to the time of the siren. That's how line ball it was. So instantaneous, yeah. Um, the phrase common sense was something that bemused Damien Hardwick, who uh, after the game and the morning after said uh, in, on, a, on a social media offering had some issues with it. But he wasn't blaming this issue for the loss. Oh, listen, we can look at that last incident, but the fact of the matter is we're up by 30 points. You know, it's easy to look at the last play, but we, we should have iced the game. You know, for 75%, I thought we were pretty good. We had a 25 you know, percent lapse, especially in the third quarter. There's some things we reckon we could have done a little bit better, but um, end of the day, everyone will always look at the last play and the what-ifs, but the fact of the matter is when you're 30 points up, you probably shouldn't lose. So 33 points up. So what's Damien Hardwick talking about in the third quarter and the last quarter that went wrong? Sometimes you get comfortable when you're five and a half goals up. And I think that's what Richmond did with some ill discipline. This is just a miss by Tarrant. He goes up, completely misses this ball. If he smashes that out of bounds, it's a five-goal margin. The Swans get their first one. So that's the first mistake. This one, this comes to the front and centre. You now tell me these players aren't comfortable with a five-goal lead at the moment. This ball comes out. And look at how hard Lloyd runs compared to these Richmond players. They're not running at all. Lloyd doesn't even get the football. Ball, but they're all still back here. And look at the space. Into Lance Franklin, marks the ball, kicks the goal. Now the Sydney are back in the game. You tell me, Luke Parker, you give Luke Parker this much space, he's got his hands in the air. You should be able to see him. You give a good player this much space at the SCG, he's going to hurt you with the football. So all of a sudden, you're not as comfortable anymore. That's three goals. All of a sudden, it's a two goal ball game. And then mistakes start to happen. Your man, Kane, Nan Curvis, doesn't need to do this on the three quarter time siren. They kick another goal. Dylan Grimes, ill disciplined, goes back pushes Buddy Franklin for no reason at all. That's always going to be 50 metre penalty and now they start to panic because they didn't work hard to start with when they were five and a half goals up and then you make mistakes like this. Baker, easy handball, goes over the top of Rioli, misses it, then he falls over. All of a sudden the panic sets in because when you're five and a half goals up, you didn't do the right thing. Sydney get into the wicks and kick this goal and then this is game on now and then the last one, that is the last one, sorry. That is the last one. So. <laughs> Double analysis. Yeah. yeah. Good vision, so that, that Really good vision. A highlight yeah. of that analysis was uh, Buddy Franklin, who uh, is going to miss next week's game against Melbourne uh, for this hit on Trent Cotchin. The match review office said it was intentional, and while the force and the actual contact cane may have been debatable as to what it actually did, the fact it's intentional is going to make that very difficult for the Swans to analyse whether they challenge this at the tough, tribunal. Tough to get off that. It's it? a clenched fist, is it? It was no, it's, I think it's an open hand, but the use of the word intent in the finding, it, it just makes it hard to... And, and again, it's a non-footy act, isn't it? So I don't think he's caught up in the moment of getting the ball. It's off the ball, and as such, I, I think he yeah. will miss. And just brilliant from Cochin. Like, that, that's been hard to play against. You don't, that's why you win three premierships as a captain, because you are hard to play against. You get under the skin of the opposition fairly. I thought it was a terrific example for anyone.